everybody, welcome back to the She-Hulk Fan Club Podcast, the only YouTube podcast that is a huge fan of She-Hulk. I am Simeon Jimmy. Uh, unfortunately, Weekend Warrior, he decided he's not a fan of She-Hulk, so he, he did not come for the fan club today. But we have four cis white males to replace the only minority. That's right, we have Aggie Eggman <laughs> Rodriguez. Oh, I'm so happy to be back to review my favorite program of all time. Thank you for having me. Uh, We have Florian Himsel. Hey, I'm the president of this fan club. I hope everyone's ready to transition towards truly loving this show. And just transition in general if you like this show, if you know what I'm saying. (laughs) I think half the fan base Ah. has already transitioned for sure. (laughs) Uh, We have E. Rich McCoy. Yeah, that's right. After this week, I am looking forward to just a black screen next week. Oh, what? You think the next episode's just going to be like the Sopranos ending? Yeah, yeah. The level of effort that they're putting into this show, it would not surprise me if they just didn't (laughs) film anything for next week. (laughs) And last, but probably least, the Kino Corner. (laughs) Hi, I'm the president of this fan club, and I uh, look forward to transitioning to uh, everyone loving the the, uh, show. Yeah, you're transitioning, aren't you? You you gay boy. Oh no, guys, guys! Uh, bad news, I just got an email. It says that She-Hulk fan club has been copyrighted. We're not allowed to use that anymore. <laughs> Uh-oh. Who copyrighted uh, it? But I, I guess I can't be that upset, because personally, I didn't like the name to begin with, and I think the fans mm. forced us to use this name, so I, this, I guess, is a great opportunity for us to get a name we actually like. I hope we don't bitch about this for 25 minutes. <laughs> this is such a bummer, I can't believe this happened. Yeah. yeah, typical toxic fan clubs. Well, what do you guys think <laughs> of She-Hulk Episode 5? Eggy, I know you're just chomping at the bit here. Well, as a young millennial who really is in touch with influencer culture and influencer products, I felt very represented. I felt like my marginalized voice was really amplified by the PS2 graphics on screen. <laughs> and so I just couldn't stop crying and screaming and shitting myself while watching it, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, she continues to be a PS2 uh, character model in, the, in this. Oh, they, it's they so didn't obvious take the criticism and, and decide to redo their CGI between episodes? <laughs> Imagine that. That's shocking. <laughs> yeah, I think no, it would be I, really cool if they gave it like Virtua Fighter for the Sega uh, 32X graphics. See, if there was actually a Kino aspect to it and not just a we outsource this for the cheapest budget possible <laughs> aspect, then maybe I could get behind it, but that's just me. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, if she looked worse, her, yeah. and had, if she looked worse and had like a walk cycle and kind of was like jumping up and down a little bit when she was <laughs> not moving, that would actually be awesome. I would love that. Well, yeah, th- this like week I actually, court. I paid attention to the credits because I was waiting for that great, you know, post credit scene that actually never came this episode. And during the, the CGI effects part, they, they had about 5,000 names. And I looked them up. These are Vietnamese sweatshop children editing the show. So really, if you're criticizing the artwork, you're, you're criticizing the art of a child. Is I that what it says I, on their LinkedIn? Yeah, she, yeah. She-Hulk <laughs> should be hung up on the refrigerator for the whole family to see. I yeah, think that it count. would have been funny if there was at least one shot of her uh, A or T posing in the courtroom <laughs> accidentally. God damn it. Just in the background. Wow, was it really this bad? What the hell? Like, everyone's just on about the graphics all the time. Jeez. Well, let's talk about the plot, because this episode uh, continues where the previous one, you know, the great cliffhanger of uh, Tidiano <laughs> wants to trademark, uh, trademark the name She-Hulk, and uh, I-, I thought She-Hulk would be excited about this, but no, she's actually pretty pissed. Well, yeah. Yeah, she, she, she does that whole, like... No, no, I'm not actually mad. I'm not actually mad as she's, you know, destroying her stapler. And obviously she's mad. And, uh, but then doesn't want to do anything about it until, you know, Mr. Boss Man is like, why do I see Booty Juicer 3000 <laughs> by She Hulk on my, uh, on the billboard on my way to work? And yeah, like, her, her oh, boss at the at the new superhero law firm, uh, he, despite being, we would assume, some sort of legal genius, uh, he sees all this news coming in. Oh, She-Hulk is now associated with all these low-brand products. Uh, She-Hulk, I know that they're stealing your copyright, your trademark, and all that, but uh, fuck it. You're fired unless you go fix this on your own. We're not going to help you. I know we're a law firm, and we would have all the resources and the knowledge, but get fucked. Uh, typical cis white man, am I right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, wow. exactly. That's right. 
Uh, there's I mean, also the the, the, uh, the other lawyer, like the, the hot guy lawyer who is a side character for some reason. Uh, he says he's yeah. talking about shoes and he says that the Iron Man threes are coming out. And I just wanted to warn him that the the advertising for those shoes are going to be very deceiving. But if you have an open mind, the shoes are actually pretty good. But <laughs> now, that's my um, review of the yeah. Iron Man three shoes. <laughs> You need an open <laughs> mind to enjoy these shoes. Damn. Yeah. That's yeah. a great sign. Well, and Will then... they have me uh, bawling like Jordan, would you say? Mm. Uh, they will All have right, me saying, have you'll never see me coming when I wear these shoes. I, I hope that they have some sort of, like, jetpack, you know? They, they could probably do that with those shoes. Yeah, now but that I mean, he, like, Tony so, has so those, like, micro machines bring... that can just transform into anything, he should put those in shoes yeah. for the public to enjoy. I mean, for hundred and eighty dollars, I would sure hope so. <laughs> it kind of feels like it, it. kind of feels like a corporate sort of tie-in to the to the whole show, where it's like, oh, sneaker culture is big. Oh, influencer culture is big. You know, and they're like, yeah, no, this this white guy is totally into totally into sneakers. Let's. Uh, um, he's a, he's a big sneaker head, and now let's you know. Let's uh, tie that into how the Avengers get their clothes, uh, which is, I guess, the guy who does all the clothes for all the superheroes has a front as a boba tea place or something. But I don't know, because it kind of just seems like the, the the kid at the boba tea place just knows the the designer. Come on, do you but really have to? Do you have to do this every time? It's it's like everything is is handed down from corporate, and, and no decision has been made properly. This is this is what you're doing, huh? What are you talking well, about, I Florian? Think... Are you, you really think that this was designed that way? You, you just think that? The, do we think the you... script was designed to lead from point A to point B, or what are you talking about? Well, we well, were saying that the corporate execs were. We're designing this script. You, you don't think they got? No, I said that? it feels. I said it. It feels corporate. It feels like they're trying to like, you know, the like, uh, you know, kind of the idea is, oh, you guys are in this little fan base. You guys are sneakerheads too, right? You'll you'll get a kick out of this episode. Oh, you guys like, uh, you know, buying beauty products from influencers. You know, it it just kind of feels like how do you do, fellow kids? In, wow. in a sense. Aggie, what were you going for? Me? No, Aggie. He was about well, to say see, something. See, I think, I think it was really, it was handed down from the corporate because right now you have a plot line where there's a guy who is tapped in with sneaker culture. He's tapped in with underground fashion culture. He knows that in order to get access to this underground fashion, he has to prove that he's not a police officer. And the guy who is the underground fashion expert is a very stylish black man but yet <laughs> corporate they say this character has to be a, a cis white chud you know they could have got some diversity in the show for once but you no know, they had to have this guy you know be who he is so i think it definitely has the stamp of corporate stench on it so i completely agree with kino quarter in that regard also i want to point out the uh, obvious racism uh in this little s- plot line well, so sub-plot. let's uh, let's set it up a little bit better for the audience because i'm guessing most yeah. people don't watch this but the hot lawyer guy <laughs> and she hulk's female friend they want to go find the edna of uh, this uh, universe like from incredibles like there's one person yeah. who i guess makes all the superhero outfits but they're impossible to get into contact with unless you go through all these uh, shady uh doings and they go to the boba tea shop which is a front for selling um, knockoff avengers merchandise and the the asian guy behind the counter the the she hulk's female friend starts speaking to him in chinese and he responds in english saying i'm not chinese uh that's some racism i can appreciate yeah yeah you but what i also wanted to point out is racist what i also wanted to point out is racist is that of course the asian character is the one selling the knockoff uh knockoff uh merchandise the avengers have- would you not wear an avengers <laughs> t-shirt <laughs> that is i would cool actually i've yeah. seen yeah, Erich wearing wear one avengers. before <laughs> really yeah when i met Erich, he was I wearing an avengers a- shirt i want to wear an egregious bulk shirt that fucking <laughs> <laughs> that would rule hell yeah <laughs> now why do you think that this is racist kino you think it's a racist it's caricature a for it's an a, asian man a- to sell knockoff merchandise yeah, it's a stereotype. Wow. They should have had a, a white man doing it. 
What if he had been like, oh, I'm not Chinese, I'm from Taiwan. Do you think that would have been an epic plot twist? (laughs) Uh, Kevin Feige would not have allowed it. Uh, (laughs) Why does she think that the man who works in L.A. does not speak English and has to start condescending to him in some Mandarin bullshit? Like there, there are 3.5 billion Asian people. So if you're just gonna die, like jump into one random guess of a language, you're more likely gonna be wrong than right. Why not just go for the tried and well, true English? I mean, with how, well, I mean, how many Chinese people much? are there? Like one point something billion. I mean, that's a pretty good chance. Yeah, like one like, in three chance. Yeah, that's a pretty good chance. But no, yeah, like, it's... she she wasn't condescending to him. She like they were trying to to look for the secret shop. Come on, she she was just being cringe. She was speaking Mandarin to a random Asian man, assuming was he it, was speaks it, Mar- it. Mandarin? He's the, not even the, fucking Chinese. <laughs> if if you just think about it, what else is she gonna do to get to that secret store, huh? They're like, at a like, boba tea shop in America. Just speak English, dude. The menu's in English. You think this motherfucker doesn't speak it? <laughs> Are you not catching on to the fact that this was some kind of illegal shop in the back? So like, you, how yeah, do you, I, that justifies I, I racism, that, Florian? Though. It's not right. I mean, it's not racist. <laughs> well, I mean, like, how is he going to be racist to speak like your own language to him? Come on, I'm talking but about the woman's language. language. That's not his language. He doesn't speak oh. Chinese, dude. We've been she over made this. an assumption that he was Chinese just because he was Asian. Yeah, what is she? Yeah. Is she Asian? I don't, I don't know. Fuck what I she don't is. Know. She, she can't speak her own language without you guys being annoyed. Jeez, imagine that. I think you I missed that, that whole thing. She, she, she no. like specifically <laughs> wanted to learn Chinese and then is trying to flex and use it. And Hell yeah. It on some like it, random it, it Korean guy. Okay, so it may be racist. All right, but like, <laughs> look, look, if you're gonna if you're gonna guess which one thing am I gonna say that's gonna get me to the secret illegal part of the store? Like, what what would your guess be? I think like speaking that language, having a one out of three chance of that being the right thing. I think that's a pretty guys, pr- pretty good guess. I, weekend, no- I, I wish Weekend Warrior was here to you know put Florian in his place <laughs> with this Asian racism. Yeah, we needed. But I'm ready to move on. Yeah, we don't need to have a a courtroom scene to justify racism. I'm sure they'll do that in one episode of this show. (laughs) Here's the thing. They go into a boba tea place, which is the front for the the thing. Boba is not Chinese. There is there is like no like signifier that she should be speaking Chinese. Yeah, according to American culture, boba tea is for white women. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's right. Uh, oh, man, so I guess you want uh, the secret, you're gonna speak the secret language, you know. She Hulk is so, gonna take Titiana to court to prove that, uh, despite spending the whole show saying she hates the name She Hulk, she does not want to associate with that. She wants to be Jennifer Walters. Uh, now that there's money involved and her job's on the line, now she has to pretend she always loved being She Hulk. And uh, as they're walking into court. And She-Hulk is wearing her, you know, shitty suit, you know, an ill-fitting suit on this giant green woman. Uh, Titiana sees her walking in and says, nice suit, Shrek. Now, speaking of racism (laughs) here, I don't recall Shrek ever wearing a suit. So I think she's just Mm. mocking her skin color at that point. I I think he did wear a suit. He did wear a kind of medieval suit when he turned into a handsome handsome shrek and shrek too yeah but but like green shrek never wore like a business suit so what is this reference just that she's green she's green and big yep what the fuck so So much racism packed into one episode no wonder why florian loves this show so much (laughs) yep hilarious (laughs) yeah florian's racism against ogres Yeah. And then that scene where Tatiana gets up and says, y'all need to go back to where you came from. I mean, that was a little bit out of pocket. But... <laughs> well, where do the green people come from? Is, how, not a place I want to go. go. <laughs> the grass is definitely not greener on that other side, I'll tell you that. Yeah, you don't want to go to a realm <laughs> full of Shreks and She-Hulks? That? I mean, I yeah, know you they do. Come from the swamp. <laughs> they come from the swamp that we like to call Louisiana. Uh, let's let's backtrack a little bit to uh, when the white boss is telling She-Hulk to take care of this. And uh, Kino did mention this before, but I think we should dive into it. Uh, Titiana is associating the She-Hulk brand with just like the lowest quality Instagram famous products you can think of. And uh, like Kino said, one of the products is called the, the Booty Boost Smoothie. 
And yeah. if you watch the credits, they have like <laughs> shit twice as much. <laughs> yeah, in in the credits of the show, they have like little cartoons, like they animations are not really they're not animated, but just cartoon drawings of the characters doing things. And I was waiting for the post credit scene, and one of these drawings was the white boss drinking the booty boost shake and staring at his ass in the mirror. So I think he might just be a big hypocrite. Hmm. Yeah. Really? Well, that 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 I show? didn't watch that oh, dark man. credit scene. Yeah, that was in the credits of the show, so I think it might be canon. Holy shit. Well, wow. they must have gotten a lot of those smoothies as a settlement, you know? Where are you going to use them up? I don't what, think there was a do? settlement. Um, they just said, just stop, you know, selling this shit. <laughs> all right, all right. Guys, guys, I, I think we have to break down the timeline of this show because okay. I don't think it makes sense at all. So. She was going on dates last episode, and yeah. Titania somehow released an entire line off of her name within the space between this episode and the last episode, and then sued her instantly? Yep, that's fast fashion for yeah, you. It's called you the gotta... grind, E. Rich. Maybe if you put in a fucking good <laughs> day's hard work, you could get something. Oh done. man, I, I can't even <laughs> imagine that shit. Like, holy <laughs> fuck. well, but it's it's true. Like, if you it's go called Adderall, get, if you get any products, you know, like a, a week and they're already out of date. You know. Well, fa- I mean, really, it could changed. be because you're gonna have these are basically just what do you call them, like private label products or whatever it's the same type of stuff that all these same influencers use with a different label on it so all the product is already there it's available so all she has to do really is have her art design maybe do a little commercial bit like it's in the opening of the or it's in the beginning of the episode uh pretty much get that stuff labeled get the trademark filed as soon as it's filed then she has the uh, wherewithal to be able to file the cease and desist against she hulk then for using it and uh, that's pretty much, so it could really all happen really in a week's time, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's not like she has to come up with the chemical compounds for the booty boost shake. It's a product that already exists and she's just slapping your name on it, I guess. Yeah, but I guess it actually is completely inaccurate because it actually takes like a month to, to declare a trademark or whatever. And how long does it take to actually get into court when you're suing somebody? Because this seems like it all happened in a couple days. Uh- it, well, they might have skipped forward take, to that part, I guess. It can take anywhere from, I mean, it depends. It can take anywhere from like maybe a week or so to months. And lawsuits like this can go on for months or years. Well, I guess then we actually just passed like a year of, of, of in-show time. So. No, what it is is that Jennifer <laughs> Walters see her real superpower as her ultimate lawyer ability of uh, turning turning a, a court into a public humiliation ritual for herself so that she wins. <laughs> well, let's talk about this trial basically beginning to end. Um, I like that uh, Titiana and her team, and they come prepared with all the news footage of She-Hulk saying she doesn't like the name and she would never identify as that. And at one point uh, in the recording, She-Hulk says the name is lazy, reductive, and straight up garbage. So again, I'm glad that th- this main character, <laughs> can, you know, I have so much in common with her. I feel exactly the same way. <laughs> yeah, you really like this character arc of how she likes her name now? That's pretty well, I'm not going to lie. This is the most likable She-Hulk slash Jennifer Walters has ever been. And we'll get to why, but uh, after the court case is over... Uh, there's a moment where this uh, fourth wall breaking character looks at the camera but is finally speechless like she has been humbled and humiliated and has nothing to say <laughs> and uh, in that moment I finally felt like there was a character there yeah uh, it, it was definitely so much less annoying than usually yeah because she didn't uh, yeah, say anything so <laughs> I know she I was what an improvement <laughs> so for the people for the people who aren't watching it how they win the case is that she takes the men that she dated in the previous episode and put the and she puts them all on the stand to show that she had been using the she hulk name for personal reasons for a for long erotic of time purposes for basically to try to get laid um and uh so she has like these four guys go up there and they all shit talk her <laughs> Um, and then the guy that she was like really into is like, yeah, I'm not into Jennifer Walters. I'm into She-Hulk. 
Yeah, she's getting completely uh, shit on by these these character witnesses saying, yeah, I only like yeah. her for being She-Hulk. I wouldn't have talked to her unless she was She-Hulk. Jennifer Walters, like that little you know rat-faced woman. No, thank you. I don't need Whitey in my bed. And uh, she's winning the case, but she's losing, I guess, her ego <laughs> and confidence and reason to live. Yeah. Like, I, I'd say I, that's a fair trade-off. Can I just say how, how lucky she is here? Because that would have never worked for a man. Because if you... If you That's go on right. a date and you you go for a sec, you don't get a second date. You're gonna be blocked. All right. There's no fucking way that that you're gonna reach out to four people that you went on a date with and they haven't blocked you. All right. It's not <laughs> wow. gonna happen. What are you doing to get these women to block you, Florian? For fuck's yeah. sake, that is not a common occurrence. <laughs> it hasn't. Has it? Haven't you oh, ever been on me, the huh? first date? Damn. And it's just. Have you ever been on a first date? And it's like. Yeah, we don't want to be romantic. We don't hate each other or anything, but, you know, we're just not clicking. And no, but you still, you know, follow, follow each other on Instagram or whatever. But you, like, never talk or anything. It's just like, oh, yeah, we just didn't click. Like, there's no blocking or anything, like, extreme after. I don't know. If you go on those hookup apps, I feel like blocking's <laughs> more likely to happen. Florian, when you oh. go on dates, do you tell them that your name's Florian? Or do you say, like, you're the world-famous game squid on YouTube every <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Which that's identity do you I, use to get laid? Yeah, it's the only way I can s- secure my trademark is by, <laughs> by using it to date, you know? So that's, that's how I have you to know, do it. You know, I guess <laughs> now, that, you put, now that it's being put in this frog. light. It's oh, like Aggie, really yeah, I bet deal. you've used uh, your She-Hulk status a few times, <laughs> huh, Aggie? <laughs> yeah, you know, I guess, you know, not, you're, you're helping me see the show in a different light when you put it this way because, you know, really I'm seeing, I'm watching this woman and I'm like, oh, a woman's having these problems? Uh, I don't think so. But then when I'm <laughs> re-examining it under the light of being a man, it is true that when I was Tobias Ronaldo, just a lowly sanitation worker sweeping the streets, you know, women would spit on me and pour their <laughs> drinks on me and just, uh, you know, really have no regard but then uh, when I said, uh, hello, this is uh, Eggington Rodriguez of, <laughs> of Wings Chili fame. Uh, yeah. Now it's like I, I can't keep him away, you know. So really, I guess I, I do feel how Jennifer Walters feels. And I think she just complains too much still. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine you in court and woman after woman takes the stand and says, I only fucked him because he's eggy. If he, if he wasn't eggy, I wouldn't have touched him. <laughs> you're, you, you're like sitting there with a tear in your eye. Good. No, you're no, sitting no, there no, and you're no, like, yeah, like, damn that's right. right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and the judge will be like, wait, that's the eggy? Oh, court is adjourned. And she goes to meet you at your car. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, hmm. uh, what, a, what much else was there? Well, She-Hulk I mean, is okay. trying to have a friendship with her black female lawyer. And after they win the case, they're going to go out to celebrate. And uh, things oh, do and not go well. Oh, she also to get a suit. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll get oh. to that. That's at that's at the end. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, but I she's sorry. like I forgot how well she she's getting along with this black lawyer. They're sharing a drink, and uh, at one point, she Hulk. Uh oh, she says, "I'm so glad we're friends now." And f- I guess for some reason, this woman, this lawyer, does not want to be friends with She Hulk because after she says that, uh, the woman insults her clothing and leaves. <laughs> So, it's like, wow, what the fuck is going on? These people are like 35. What, why are they one acting like I this? Do, one thing I do like about this show is how pathetic Jennifer Walters actually Definitely. is. Definitely. It's making it way better for me. <laughs> yep. No yeah, I mean, do people here. actually act like that? Well, she, I think she seemed kind of needy when she said, oh, we're finally friends. But then also, do you think it's possible that the... The lawyer woman actually wanted to to date, but then she was friend zoned, and that's why she left. No, or am I thinking too much into that one? <laughs> hmm. I think you're thinking too deeply into this. They would have been true lovers. It could have been great. I think she was thinking oh. to herself, "I'm such a better lawyer than She Hulk. Why does this fucking chud get to have her own <laughs> big name in the lights and billboards?" Uh, just because she's some kind of green person, but a black woman can't get ahead. You know what? That's how racist society is. A green woman comes to the only one that exists, and she can just still burst through that glass ceiling <laughs> while a sister can't get ahead out here. Yeah, how and come she Hulk was really the message? She Hulk gets uh, hired because of her skin color, but this woman will probably get fired. It's just not fair. 
Yeah, if only She-Hulk would ever have gotten fired for her characteristics, huh? She almost did. <laughs> uh, so this is episode five she out of like out of first. nine. So what? There's six, seven, eight, Wait, nine. Out of nine. I think there's only nine, right? I know yeah, seven. I think that's nine. Oh, okay. So I mean, if there's four episodes left, do we think that She-Hulk and Titiana are actually going to fight again, like in episode one, or is it going to be all courtroom shenanigans? Are you saying you didn't appreciate this great battle they just had? I mean, it's like, you know, it's like the middle chapter. This is act two of the three act structure, and it ends with, you know, I guess a victory for our main character, which is kind of uh, out of turn for drama writing. But I, I, are you guys excited to see where this great battle goes? Yeah, trust me, episode six is going to be uh, The Empire Strikes Back of She-Hulk. Oh my god, Tidiana strikes back for sure. She may yeah. be one of the least interesting villains we've ever gotten. Titania or whatever the what? fuck. Her name is. She's just How like a millennial so influencer. And I don't know if she really has a yeah. personality is outside of that. She has superpowers, I guess, but I don't know how that works or how she got them or why I should even care. She like burst into a courtroom in the first episode and then I completely forgot about her. And then I guess she's just an influencer. Like that's <laughs> that's the whole deal here. I, I don't know how you can say that. She seems like not only the perfect villain for this show, but overall a very interesting villain. What's interesting uh, about her? Let's let's get the bullet points out of the way, Florian. But we've had all kinds of bullshit villains, okay? We got witches, we got aliens, we got Thanos, but what we haven't gotten is a good old-fashioned copyright troll, and we finally have it. <laughs> the most real, kind of disgusting, despicable, under-the-bridge-living uh, under villain that exists in real life, and now also in She-Hulk. And I don't know, I think it's just great, all right? It's just, like, why would villains always try to blow shit up when they could just sue you? Like, slap some frivolous suit on you, but and what are you going to do? These are the lowest stakes possible. I do not care if She-Hulk gets sued. Why do you think that She-Hulk would have high stakes? What, did you not realize that this was I don't need it to have a, high stakes. I, I don't need that. But that I, is my question, she, though. Will the stakes... Care about. Are the stakes going to be uh, risen, or are they going to rise for these final four episodes? Are we going to actually have some <laughs> intriguing plot and a real threat? Well, I, I mean, I, I kind of like keeping the stakes low, but the stakes can be kept low if the characters in the story are, are more interesting. You know, well, like, I think Jennifer Walters is getting slightly more interesting every week. Maybe she'll be a good character by the end, and I'll be excited to see her team up with Ms. Marvel in Avengers 8. Yeah, it's, it's going to be real crazy. I wonder what's going to happen. I, I, I'm thinking that something like, I think somehow she's going to have to stop being a lawyer, right? Like It's it's probably like Wonder Wish where it's just like, yeah, isn't this fun? But we know this isn't sustainable. Nobody's going to watch this for too long, right? So. <laughs> he's going to say uh, he's, I took the red pill and I want to be a trad wife now to a trad hulk and uh, she's going <laughs> to leave the professional life behind and uh, go make some sandwiches. I think that would be a good ending. <laughs> She's well, anyway, let, let, let's the finish quantum. the ending of this episode. Go yeah. ahead, Kino. What were you saying? I said uh, it should end with her using one of those quantum suits from Endgame to go back in time and be a trad wife to Thanos <laughs> when he was on the planet <laughs> after the snap. <laughs> wow. yeah, I'm sure how Thanos I would like that. End. You know, he wants somebody who looks like Gamora, I think. <laughs> 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 but uh, the final scene, She-Hulk finally gets to go to the super secret uh, superhero costume place. And uh, I kind of like the the guy Luke, the the black ki uh, kid guy with the dreadlocks or whatever. He's like the fashion designer. I thought his performance was pretty funny. Uh, I don't know how much he's going to be in this show, but I definitely immediately liked him more than most of the characters on this show. Did you guys get any vibes from him, or is he just like, yeah, I don't oh, yeah. care? He had swag, you know, you could tell. You know, he was really about his craft. He took it seriously, just like we do, so I could respect that. He kind of right. felt like he was out of uh, that game, Watch Dogs 2. Yeah. I played a little bit of I played a little bit of that because it was on Game Pass the other day, and oh. it really annoyed me. Um, I, I just remember that game exists. Wow. Yeah, I guess that. <laughs> I guess he would fit in. No. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, well, She-Hulk is trying on her new costume. We don't get to see what it looks like yet. And then it's revealed, I guess, uh, he's making a suit for 
Daredevil? Like, that's the, the big cliffhanger? Is that who that was? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because Daredevil's was, also a lawyer, be. right? Yeah, he's, like, making, yeah. like, a horned yeah. mask. There should be a fight between Daredevil and She-Hulk, like, in a, a courtroom. That's yeah, what yeah. I want to see. They're supposed to be best fight or a lawyer fight. Well, they would still have to take lawsuits that might be against each other, so could happen. You know, she. You know, I, I was thinking about this, like, about She-Hulk, right? These people sue her. You know, she's like this, like, demigod sort of figure now. Like, can't she just, like, kill them? Uh, you can sue the U.S. government, Kino, and they could easily kill you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, speaking how of many people... Games, I heard there's a great <laughs> new documentary coming up on CNN I heard about, about uh, the government and some people that didn't like them very much. But continue. Is it called yeah, January also... 6th, America's Heroes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I heard about that. I think uh, She-Hulk should uh, do a crossover with that. Now that would be some real Kino, if I do say so myself. Yeah, Breitbart released a, uh, a documentary that, you know, is about American heroes, too. It's called My Son Hunter, um, which <laughs> we'll talk about later. Oh, we should definitely <laughs> review that one day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad we have all these different things that we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> well, hey, we should wrap up this one because I don't want to go on too long for this random episode of She-Hulk. Do you guys have any last or final thoughts on the episode? Uh, yeah. Um, I had to like refresh myself with the episode right before we recorded this because I completely forgot <laughs> everything that happened over the course of 24 hours. They're just like also forgettable. I don't know. I, I, I'm not like, I don't hate them, but I also don't like them. They're, you know, and and this one definitely was like very mid, even if Jennifer Walters was maybe a little bit more interesting. Um, this is the emptiest episode we've gotten so far for me. Uh, the copyright battle is not interesting in the slightest to me. And it just, really made the whole thing seem incredibly pathetic that we're halfway through the season <laughs> and this is the shit we're dealing with. There is no escalation. There's no build up. There's, there's really nothing. It all just kind of peters out. And then we've got four more episodes of this show and I'm really not looking forward to them. Wow. Will Who the, the subplot of Hulk going into space ever come back in this show? Or is that just strictly setting up a different movie? Oh, it's I think it's set up for something else. Nah, it's gonna come back. Why would it? They, they must have yeah, put it in there for a reason. Aren't they doing like a Planet Hulk or something like that? That's oh what God. Thor that. 3 was. Yeah, actually. Oh, that's, that's so what weird. Thor 3 was? Yeah. I believe it's going no, to but space again. <laughs> didn't, didn't they say that Hulk is gonna do another one of these like sci fi movies? Well, or now something? that he's smart Hulk, they're definitely not doing the real World War Hulk. Like, because it wouldn't work with the way the character is now. So I, I can't think of anything that would be fun. No. Yeah. Well, then again, control. isn't that isn't that phase four of Marvel, though? <laughs> I don't know. I, I could enjoy a lot of the Hulk. I, I think any kind of movie with him would be great, you know? Yeah. Like, even if he's, like, actually smart, he could still smash stuff occasionally. <laughs> he, he'd, he'd be great. Eggy, did you have any final thoughts on this episode? Uh, yeah, if this really is nine seasons or whatever total for this episode, uh, I think it's unforgivable that there was such a completely lackluster uh, situation that this episode was. I will say they did keep up the theme of, as I counted, I believe it was approximately five minutes into the episode. There's been like a, or some situation or remark every single episode about how men are so terrible and bad. And it was continuing this episode. She said something uh, to the gist of if she wasn't She-Hulk, then men would be constantly harassing her and like attacking her on the street every single day because they want that sweet, sweet Jennifer Walter booty. <laughs> uh, but since she's She-Hulk, she could crush them all. Otherwise, yeah, basically this was... Pretty unforgivable in terms of uh, being insubstantial for the small amount of episodes in the season. I think really all of them should be having something to bring to the table. Not that I would say that the show's been particularly impactful so far, but this is yeah, kind of a low point in my personal opinion. Hopefully we can pick it up next week. I mean, I still think that the show should have been like, you know, a sitcom where there's a, pers a new person of the week to... Uh, um to either fight against in court or, you know, like a new Marvel character to defend because of some, you know, stupid thing rather than 
it this feels like somewhere in between being that and wanting that kind of uh storytelling that you see in shows like better call Saul and shows like you know where each episode is continuing on this one narrative well i'll give the show this uh compared to like moon knight and wandavision this one actually feels like it needs to be a tv show whereas moon knight like j- just put the episodes together it's a movie they just cut up a yeah. movie this show would not work as a movie you put all these episodes no. in a row you're like what the fuck is this this is no movie so yeah i'll, also, I'll give it that it's the yeah. closest thing to a tv show we've gotten so far but i think they needed it they needed to make it even more of a tv show like yeah like have normal tv show type storytelling structure in it as well and that, that you know i think that that would solve a lot of the problems that the show has because it's like this kind of middle ground where it's trying to build up and it's trying to be like oh we're telling this one over arch grand overarching story you know with each episode she hulk is getting better and better at this or that or something like this you know and it's building up to some kind of climax it's like no just have her as she hulk uh you know have a little like how she became she hulk and whatever get that over with and have this be like a sitcom i think that that would have been better uh, well, fingers I, crossed for season two well <laughs> i i think i think you guys are being too hard on this i thought this was a, a, an episode that was as good as the others and I, I I don't know, I guess I might be biased, but I, I thought this copyright shit was interesting, and there is enough people talking about copyright issues, alright? Yeah, I, I, I don't hate this as much as everybody else uh, seems to either, Florian. I like that the way to win the court case was oh, yeah. to use the guy she went on a date with from the previous episode as character witnesses to shit all over her. And I like that. The, the scene at the end when she is going to break the fourth wall, but is speechless out of, you know, just sadness and defeat. That might be my favorite shot of the whole show so far. So uh, I'd, I'd say the show's not really improving or getting worse, but uh, they're doing some things that I think are halfway clever. Like stuff that a good show would do all the time. This show is finally doing it once. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really liking the fact that they just had the the dating episode and then used it right in this episode uh, yeah that's that's good yeah. i i don't think i would like it if it was all disconnected sitcom shit anyway this is way too long so uh, everybody give a plug and give a hug Everidge, who oh, would I'm... you like to hug today <laughs> nobody okay florian <laughs> i guess it's your turn well everyone check out ball frog on steam and and hug a ball frog you know if I start selling uh, like fake ball frog merch, like bal frog T-shirts, <laughs> would you sue me in court? Yes. Well, good luck. I, I, good luck getting me over in these American courts, buddy. You're done. I actually have a <laughs> trademark on ball frog, so well, but not good, good bo- luck. But not bullfrog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't change one letter. Y- yes, I can. Silly. What are you gonna do? Yes, you can. The Avengers did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the Avengers are, are gonna get their cease and desist anytime. That's why they have to sell it illegally, you know? Oh. Oops. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Aggie, what about you? Well, Who do you want to hug? Well, I would like to give a big virtual hug to everyone who smashed the like button and the subscribe button with notifications on, and make sure to subscribe for more. Thank you, I have nothing else to plug. Aquino, you said you wanted yeah. to plug your girlfriend's Twitter at Keffels, I think you said. Oh my god. Is that I'm what you blocked, said? I've been blocked by Keffels for like months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when he said he's going to plug his girlfriend, I didn't I didn't think it was going to be the Twitter. <laughs> oh, the butt plug? <laughs> That's pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, just go check out my YouTube channel. Okay, and E-Rich, finally, who would you like to hug? I, I would like to hug the uh, dead corpse of the queen. Why? Uh, People are going to wait surprised. 17 hours in line to see you do that? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking British people are insane. I'm going to ruin it for them. Would you wait in line oh, 17 yeah. hours in the rain to look at a box for one minute? I don't Sobius think I did that with uh, Lennon. He's I don't think I'd nuts. do that for anything. No. Anyone. Erich could die and I wouldn't wait in line for an hour. <laughs> 
All right. What are you? T- that's that's surely something special to to actually see the queen. You, you got to make dead. sure she's actually dead. Like, oh, thank God, I confirmed it with my own eyes. <laughs> I, I don't know. Would you really miss out on seeing the queen's corpse? I can now? see it on the news. I don't like seeing corpses. Wow. I do when it's people I don't like, like the queen. <laughs> well, there you go. Win win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So go wait seventeen hours. In but line. you don't get to see her body. It's just the fucking coffin. Oh, they could have had yeah. some guy with like a phone like strapped to his head just standing there with like vr queen funeral and had like you know five dollars <laughs> to watch it or something they could have made so much money and when you donate yeah, it it plays the, the donation message out loud on your phone <laughs> that's the most respectful funeral of all well done <laughs> i want to do a uh, uh what, what's that called where they puppeteer the dead guy uh weekend at bernie's <laughs> I want to do a work weekend of Bernie's with the Queen's corpse. That would fucking rule. 80 years in England? Yeah, he, he, he's just going to pass legislation and everything. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Oh, he doesn't have that power. <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh, peace.